ever think about stress? I mean, we all have things that trigger us or set us off. Things that make us feel anxious or worried, irritated or depressed. You see, when I was in grade eight, I used to love playing baseball. And one day during tryouts, I thought, man, this is going to be a breeze. I'm already a superstar. I'm on the trajectory to making it to the big leagues. A family friend is already in the big, so I had my in and like, what did I have to worry about? I was good. Well, the coach decided to start us off with a nice drill called the duck walk. And for those of you who don't know what that is, it is essentially squatting to the ground, holding your ankles and walking around the bases a couple times like a duck. That's right. First base, second base, third base, then home. And then you do it again. Friends, I kid you not, if there was a place to hide after the first time, I would have done so but I was being watched like a vulture, ready to be drilled by my coach if I stopped. And stress was at an all time high there. I mean, I stayed with the team, but boy, did it stress me out having to go to practice. And now you may not have the same worries that I had in middle school, but experiencing things are uncomfortable. They're stressful and even depressing is unfortunately a part of life for us. Things like disagreements with a friend or having your saved information erased on a game, ads you can't skip on YouTube like this is the longest 15 seconds of my life, or cleaning up the cat litter, dropping your phone on concrete, or waiting in lines at amusement parks. You see, those are the kinds of things we'd all rather not have to deal with. Why? Well because of the way they make us feel. Sometimes the stuff that we don't want to deal with is small and easy to move past by. If we get frustrated with ads on YouTube, we just don't watch them, you know, five seconds and then skip. Or if we drop our phone, we just walk around with a broken screen for a while. Or if we really want to ride the roller coaster at the amusement park, we just wait in the long, long line. Problem solved. But sometimes the things we rather not have to face are bigger issues. These are the things that stress us out or upset us in ways that's so big that we just don't know how to deal with them. Things like a friend lying to us over and over and over, or feeling like we can't seem to get out of our depression, or not being able to go on a trip at school because we're failing all of our classes or having to go back to school after a horrible rumor was spread about us on social media, or even living through the coronavirus pandemic. These things are much more painful, and because of that, they can make our feelings much more intense. When we feel that deep depression, hurt, anxiety, fear, panic, pain, or shame, well, I think if we're honest, most of us don't even know what to do. Maybe we try to do anything to not have to face it. We avoid it so we don't have to think about or deal with our feelings or circumstances we're experiencing. Or maybe when we're experiencing these feelings, we do the exact opposite. We feel that deep depression, hurt and pain and anxiety to the point that those intense feelings feel like they take control of us. Or maybe we don't try to avoid our feelings, but we don't really deal with our feelings either. We simply don't know what to do about it, so we just don't do anything at all. You see, we all have different ways of dealing with the ways that we feel, and that's called coping. Coping is simply how we deal with the difficult circumstances, situations, or feelings in our lives. And there are usually two ways to deal or cope with what's happening in and around us. And the help, there is a helpful way and then the unhelpful way. Helpful coping skills are so important. They give us ways to handle our emotions or process what we're dealing with so that we can not only feel better in the moment, but moving forward in the future. Helpful coping skills are things that we do that are good for us. They are healthy ways to deal with our feelings. So, what are these coping skills that can help us through difficult situations that we face? Well, let's see what some of our friends do. One of the ways that I like to cope is listening to worship music. When I feel stressed, I go outside, 
go for walks. Um, you know, if it's cold, I get bundled up, put in my earphones, listen to some music, listen to some uh, podcasts, audiobooks, anything that I kind of use to take my mind off of off of off of things and uh, just kind of get out of nature, get my body moving. Um, yeah, I love going for walks. Yes. One of the ways that I cope is video games. Yes, yeah. Huh. You see, what's great is that there are a lot more things like this that we can do to deal with things that are stressful or difficult. Things like putting on our favorite playlist, praying, talking to a friend, counselor, or trusted adult, getting plenty of sleep, and I'm telling you, that's a, that's a sleeper. It's really good for you. Going outside into nature, journaling, maybe watching a funny video on YouTube, or eating healthy food. But on the opposite end, there are also ways of coping with our feelings that are unhealthy. There are some unhelpful things we do to deal with what we feel. They are the things that we do to try to ignore, forget about, or escape from what's happening in and around us. And these, well, these could be staying in bed for days at a time, binging Netflix or YouTube for hours when we're struggling, maybe punching the wall or breaking things, avoiding or shutting out people who love and want to help us, spreading rumors or being disrespectful to take the attention off of ourselves, or maybe picking fights with our friends or families to get our anger out. Now. Can I let you in on a little secret? Everybody struggles with this. You, me, our parents, the kids at school who seem to have it all together. Every single one of us struggle to choose healthy ways to deal with what we feel. And I think one reason for that is because coping can be difficult. Sometimes the things we turn to isn't all that bad. Exercise, naps, video games, ice cream, Netflix, sleep, all the stuff can be helpful when we do them in healthy ways. But sometimes we use these things in unhealthy ways and that's when they can create more problems. Coping in unhealthy ways can hurt us more than it helps us. And here's what I mean. When we go for a run, that's good because it helps us take a break or work out some anxiety. But when we run four times a day to avoid our anxiety, that's when it could lead us to harm or it could lead us to harm us physically. Or when we watch a couple of hours of Netflix to make ourselves laugh when we're sad, that's okay. But when we watch Netflix for 24 hours straight because we don't want to deal with what's making us sad, well, that's not as okay. Or when we take a nap because we're overwhelmed, that's helpful because it can re-energize us. But when we sleep all day and don't get out of bed, that's not so helpful. You see, the problem with all the unhealthy ways to cope is that they only work for a moment. Sure, you might feel better right away, but at the end of the day, that feeling you're working through is still there. That circumstance or struggle didn't change or go away. It's not gone just because you tried not to think about it for a few hours. Or depending on how you choose to cope, it's possible to end up with an even bigger issue to deal with. And that's because unhealthy coping doesn't help you in the long run. And honestly, this type of coping doesn't help you deal with what you're experiencing. And the reality is, you're going to face difficult circumstances and big feelings for the rest of your life. And that's why it's so important to think about healthy ways to cope now as a middle schooler. I want that for you. But more than that, so does God. The thing is, People have been experiencing intense feelings and difficult situations since the beginning of time. And because of that, we can find a lot of examples and wisdom about how to handle those things in the Bible. These are real words written by real people who dealt with real feelings. In other words, they get it. And I want to jump into a book in the Bible that's found in the Old Testament, which is the portion of the Bible written before Jesus lived here on earth. And this particular book is called Lamentations because a lamentation is a way to express deep grief, pain, or sorrow. And a lot of what is written is actually in poetry. 
The person who wrote this book was dealing with a lot of sadness in their life at the time, and they'd witnessed the destruction of the city of Jerusalem, and it was a pretty horrible situation. A lot of people died, and most of those who were survived or starving, injured, or homeless. So let's take a look at what is written after witnessing this devastating situation. I remember my affliction and my wandering the bitterness and the gall, I well remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Okay, so let's break this down. First, in this passage, there's a reality check. The author made a choice to be honest about where they were going through. A choice to deal with how they felt. They acknowledged the painful stuff and named all the things that were hard for them in the moment. They talked about afflictions, wandering, bitterness, and feelings, sad or, or downcast. All those words that describe deep pain, sadness, isolation, and feelings of despair that we can all probably relate to. Now, even though what the author experienced was pretty terrible, the feelings they felt weren't bad. It's okay to feel pain and sadness and isolation and despair and whatever else we might feel. It's when we let those feelings control us or cause us to do unhealthy things that they become, well, a problem. But in the second part of this passage, something changed. The sad author who wrote Sad poetry didn't stay stuck in sadness. Instead, they made another choice. This time, it was a choice to do something to help deal with their feelings. A choice to take action. A choice to cope in a more helpful way. The author of Lamentations chose to cope by focusing on God's love and faithfulness. They made the choice to have hope. How? By reminding themselves every day they woke up they got out of bed and maybe even had some breakfast that every morning was a fresh start. That with God, there's always a possibility for more, for better, for help and for hope. Does that mean that things just suddenly got better? Nope. There was still sadness and destruction all around, but they coped with what they were experienced, experiencing in a healthy and helpful way. They got good things into their brain. They reminded themselves every day that God's compassion never fails. And with God's love, they didn't have to be controlled by circumstances and feelings. And yo, the truth is the same is for us. You can have hope. You can choose to deal with the painful feelings and emotions you experience in helpful ways. You can find healthier ways to cope that will carry you forward. You can choose what you do and how you feel. And I don't know about you, but I want to choose healthy and helpful things that will make my life better. And while coping in healthy ways may not fix everything or make what I'm dealing with go away, it will help me manage the big feelings and difficult circumstances I may face. And it might even help not make things worse. And I want that for all of us. I want us all to cope in ways that are helpful. I want us to remember this. You can choose what you do with how you feel. So how do we do that? How do we choose healthy and helpful ways to cope? Well, you can start by asking yourself two questions. And the first question is this. What's one part of my life that's difficult to deal with? Well, maybe you're dreading the bad grade in English. You know will be on your next report card this quarter. Or you feel anxiety at school that leaves you upset at the end of every day when you get home. Whatever it is for you, be honest with yourself about what's making it difficult for you to cope. Simply naming and talking about what you're dealing with is the best place to start. And second question is, what do I usually do when I feel this way? Do you avoid? Do you ignore? Procrastinate? Do you blame? Do you get grumpy? Do you get help? Do you go on a walk? Do you pray? 
Do you practice deep breathing? What are your go-to coping skills? Are they helpful and healthy or not? Now here's the encouraging part. You get to choose helpful ways to deal with what you feel. You have the power right now to change the way you cope for the better. So the next thing you can do is start by choosing to change some patterns for the better. Instead of shutting down, you know, talk to a trusted adult. Instead of binging Netflix, give yourself a time limit. Maybe take an hour break from the assignment that's stressing you out instead of procrastinating for days. Set an alarm to remind you when break time is over. Try listening to a worship playlist or writing down a prayer or looking up some Bible verses to help shift your focus to what you know to be true about God and how he feels about you. Whatever it is, make just one small step towards a healthier way of coping. And remember, this isn't a one-time fix. Like the author of Lamentation said, you'll need God's help on a daily sometimes, so ask for it. Let that be one of your first steps to helpful coping. And if you're struggling to know where to start, maybe begin where the writer of the scripture did. Shift your focus to what you know to be true about God and how he feels about you. When you find yourself facing overwhelming feelings or hard challenges, focus on God, ask for his help. Remember what is true about how he feels about you. And how does God feel about you? Listen, he loves you so much, exactly how he made you. He created just you, the way that you are. He gave you abilities and things that you love, and he loves being your friend. He also promises that he's working for the good in everything that you're going through, even if it's really, really hard. He says that he will never leave you, that he loves you too much, and he's with you right now in his heart. It's filled with love for you. He's your biggest fan, and this is what's true about your life. But when you're going through something hard, it can take up a lot of our brain space. So try to take over some of that space with things that are true. That can be your first step towards healthy coping. Now, let me stop here and say that for some of you, this isn't so simple. Maybe the behaviors you're using to cope are more than just unhealthy, they're harmful. And they're hurting you and leading you down a difficult path. Or maybe the coping skills you have are there for a reason, because your home is unsafe or unstable, or your circumstances isn't good, or you need a place to go or a way to avoid it. And if that's you, please know that we want to help you through that. Talking to a trusted adult who can help you deal with whatever you're facing is a way to start to get the help that you need. So please know this is a safe place for you to do that. And remember, you can choose what to do with how you feel. You can start practicing helpful ways to cope right now. So as we wrap up, I want you to think about this question and put it in our comments below. What's one helpful way we can cope? Much love, and I will see you all next time at Middle School Digital Shorts.